Hey everybody, so today we're going to be doing a video on how to test all your outputs for your Link ECU. This is going to be on us when you said BBTI, but the principles apply to any Link ECU setup that you have. So let's get into it. Hey everybody, so today we're going to do a video on a Link ECU and we're going to be showing you how to test all of your outputs. Now normally for my Link videos, I just do a screen capture on there, but because we're going to be physically testing outputs on an engine, I have to do it with the GoPro so you can actually see what I'm doing in real time. So hopefully everything is going to be okay and you can see everything on there. Um, if not, I will be talking step by step exactly what I'm doing and I'll try and get the camera to a stage where you can see on the software what is going on. Okay, so basically what we're going to do is obviously look at all the outputs that we've got set up on the ECU that we can test and then we are going to go ahead and we are going to test them. Uh, just a heads up, obviously the fuel pump, I'm going to test it so the relay clicks. Uh, but I have not collected the fuel pump because we can't test the injectors if the rails are full of fuel Otherwise, we're going to end up with an engine flooded with petrol Okay, so that is something to bear in mind when you are doing the testing like this is just be very careful Because when you are testing injectors, they are physically opening. So if you do have a full fuel rail with pressure behind it Then be aware that that is what is going to happen. Okay, so in this case, I've disconnected the fuel pump and I ran the engine without the fuel pump connected so we could use up all the fuel so I don't end up flooding the engine. All right, so it is relatively straightforward. Obviously, in terms of the software, you're just going to end up in your configuration tab for now because it should be part of the setup of your ECU itself. Okay, then what you want to do basically is you want to go through and see what outputs you have and what you are able to test. So in this particular case, I'm going to be testing things like the injectors, the coils. Uh, I'm going to test the oil control valves. Um, in this setup, I don't have acoustic control induction system valves, so I can't test that. But that's another thing you could possibly test. Okay, so what we'll basically do is we're going to go into the menus over here and I'm going to show you exactly where I'm going. And then what we're going to do is we're going to test the injectors one by one. Now they're easy to hear on the camera. Um, I will go through the coils testing one by one. And what I'll try and do is I'll try and lift up the coil and see if you can, if I can make the spark noise louder by just gently lifting it up off of there. But the spark plugs can be a little bit difficult to hear in terms of actually getting it on there. All right. So I'm going to start basically from this menu and I'm going to work my way down. It's probably the easiest way to do it just because that's the easiest way to do it. I don't really know what else to say. But looking in the top here, you've got configuration, then you've got fuel. So you'd open that sub menu, then you've got fuel setup and you're going to open that sub menu over there. And then down here, you've got injector test. Once you open that, you're going to see another screen open that says injector test and uh, test injection counts. Test injection frequency, test injection pulse width. I, you don't really need to mess around with that for what we're doing now. We're just kind of testing to make sure that injector one is wired to injector one, injector two is wired to injector two. All right, so what you want to basically do is over here on the top line, you want to click on where it says off. It's now going to open up all eight injectors for you, and now you're going to be able to test them out. So I'm going to take you through exactly what I'm going to do. At the moment, I've got all of the injectors plugged in but not all the way. Obviously they've got brand new terminals, they're brand new connectors, so you can kind of just push them on and then you'll get a click when you go through the test. Now, to prove that when I test injector one, that it's injector one that's clicking, what I tend to do is I'll leave all the injectors on, I'll set injector one to turn on, it'll go click, 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 and then I'll go and lift injector one off, the clicking will stop, I'll put it back on and it'll start clicking again. That tells me that injector one is wired to injector one. So nice and simple. We're just going to do that now. We're going to turn on injector one. And straight away, you can hear it clicking away and watch this. I just gently lift that off, turns off. Put that back on, it turns on. All right. And then what you'll do is you'll do the same for injector two. So we'll come along here. Lift that off and go from there. All right, you get the concept. I'm actually gonna do all eight now on the video just to show you, okay? But obviously I'm not gonna talk through the whole thing. So we'll go injector three. Sorry, injector four. Injector five. 
Check to six. Check to seven. Okay. And last one, let's go to injector eight. Fantastic. Okay. Just turn that off. Right, fantastic. Okay, so what I've basically done is A, I've proved that all the injectors are working because we've gone through all eight, and B, I've proved that injector one is wired to injector one, injector two is wired to injector two. Now, this is where it becomes super important to understand your engine, all right? Not all engines are laid out in exactly the same way. They can have different firing orders. They can have whatever particular way that they like to do it. So you do need to make sure that you are aware of your particular engine and exactly which one is cylinder one, which one is cylinder two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so that is a, a caveat, is obviously not every engine is the same and not every engine has cylinder one where this has cylinder one, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so do bear that in mind. And that obviously applies for the ignition as well. So now what we're gonna do is pretty much exactly the same process and we're just gonna go through through and do all of the ignition ones now so again if you look down here on there so we've got fuel over there now we've finished with that we'll close that down and then we've got ignition just underneath that so again it's just on a subtree so you click that little arrow there that will open up and then you can go over to ignition test which is the second one down from ignition main and this is a really nice simple window you just have ignition test on there and if you double click on here exactly the same as the injectors you just got ignition one to eight and what's going to happen is exactly the same as soon as I click on there. You can probably actually hear it clicking away. And if I gently try and lift this up. There you go. You can hear that clicking like mad. Right. And now let's go to injector two. So I'll just go over there to in injector two, which is going to be that one over there. Yeah, that clicking away like mad. Then we'll go over to ignition three. Sorry, I think I said injector earlier. And that's clicking away like mad. All right, I'm just gonna go through the rest of them now. So we'll do number four. All righty. There you go. Then we'll go on to number five. Woo! Fun and joys of testing on a running motor. But there you go. That's number five. Just a little bit of fuels in the rail there, obviously. Always fun. Number six. Now obviously some of them you can hear really loud because the valves are open, but in some of them the valves are closed, so you can't hear it at all. So we'll do number seven quickly. I'm always a bit careful around these. I don't like 50,000 volts through my fingers. Rightio. And then lastly, we're going to do number eight. Bosh, there you go. And now we can just turn that to off. And voila. So we've tested now all of the coils and we've been through the exact same process. So we're testing the exact same thing. So we're doing two things. Number one, we're making sure that injector, that ignition one is wired to coil one. And we're making sure that the rest of them there, and we're making sure that they are actually firing away. So those are kind of the two things that we're testing with that same as the injectors. Okay. Now then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start testing the other little outputs that you have. So the next table you really want to go into now is auxiliary outputs, which is number one, two, three, four, five down. Now bear in mind, this is the G4X software. G4 Plus software is quite similar, but some slight differences on there. Okay, but you should be very, very able to do your G4 Plus from this video as well. Okay, so this is where obviously you have to know exactly what you have connected and then what you can test. Okay, so I'm going to show you that now in a minute because there's some things that are assigned to outputs that are not in this auxiliary outputs menu, specifically the VVT, and we'll show you that in a second, right? But again, as I said, I'm going to work my way top down to the bottom. So the first thing I'm going to test is my check engine light. So you see I've got a check engine light over there. If I click on where it says check engine light with a spanner next to it over there, you'll see the little menu pop up here. It tells you what output it is, auxiliary three. And then underneath that, it says auxiliary three test. Okay. So what we're going to do is, hopefully you're going to be able to see this. Okay. Our check engine light is on at the moment, obviously, because... 
we have got the ignition on. So I'm just going to put it to on, stay on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on to PWM. And can you see that starting to flash like that? Okay, so that's just a nice easy way to test that over there. So we'll turn that off now. So obviously remember the check engine light's staying on because the ignition is on. So that's the way I can test it in that particular regard. Right, so if we move down over here, we haven't got any of those, none of those. Ah, fuel pump control. So that's the next one down over there. So again, exactly the same thing. Uh, on the third line is your auxiliary six test. Now it does say auxiliary six because I've set the output as auxiliary six. And I do hope you guys can see this. I do apologize, but yeah, that's where you should see it. So again, we're gonna go into test and we're gonna double click on test. And as we do, we've got a couple of options there. So in this case, I'm just gonna turn it to on and I'm gonna keep quiet. There you go, you can hear it clicking. I'll put it on PWM just so you can hear it really loudly. Right, there you go, okay. so. Obviously, PWM is just, it's just pulsing the thing. That's why you hear the relay going click, 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 click. But just to help you guys hear that it's actually working. If the fuel pump was hooked up, you'd actually obviously hear the fuel pump kicking on. But as I said, I'm not going to do that because I want to test injectors and so on and so forth. So I'm not going to fill the rails with fuel over there. Right, so we're going to go down there, down there, down there, down there, down there. Nothing down there, nothing down there. And also on the G4X software, which is quite nice, is you have a little drop down menu that tells you all the output pins. So this is new for the G4X, really, really nice. So you can see we've got auxiliary one is VVT inlet bank one, auxiliary two is VVT inlet bank two, auxiliary three is check engine light, four is taco, five is my e-throttle relay, uh, six is fuel pump, seven would be ACIS, but in this harness, because uh, it's ITB harness, is not using ACIS. Then eight is my starter relay control, and nine and 10, that is my e-throttle plus and minus. Obviously in this case, we have used the e-throttle with the pedal on just to get the engine running so you guys could see it running there. But this is also very, very nice to go through. Okay, so now we have sort of three other outputs that we can test, but they're not gonna be based in here because it's e-throttle and it's VVTi. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go down to electronic throttle. We're gonna go to e-throttle one. We're gonna go to e-throttle setup. Okay, now obviously you can see our e-throttle mode is on and when it does that, it does lock everything. So if we want to test anything, we do have to unlock that. So we do need to go into on. We do need to go into setup mode and it'll give you a warning there to say it's disabled all the safeties in relation to that. Just be aware of that. Now obviously our e-throttle relay is set to auxiliary five as prior. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to test Sorry, not that one. I'm going to test that relay. I'm going to turn it on. Oh, it's already on. Just bear with me a second. I'm just going to. There you go. So now I can hear the. I can hear the relay click over there. So I'm super happy with that. I'll just turn that back to on. Actually, I'll turn that back to off. Then the noise from the throttle motor will go away. Right, that's fantastic, a little buzzing in the background there. Um, oh, by the way, you can set the e-throttles to only run when the engine's actually running. Uh, so if there's this run when installed and you say no, so obviously if you just put the ignition on, it's not gonna be buzzing your motor away. So just a little hint for you guys when you're doing that. Uh, right, so the next thing we wanna test is the VVT solenoids. Okay, so on the engine over here, this is our VVT solenoid for bank two. This is our VVT solenoid for bank one. So what I'm basically gonna do is I'm gonna go into VVT control. I'm gonna open up bank one and I'm gonna go into inlet bank one. You'll see I've set this all up already and I have the videos on how to set everything up. But what we wanna do now is we know that auxiliary one is set to bank one. And so we can go to auxiliary one test. And if I hit on, it's gonna it's gonna click the solenoid. So I'm gonna hold the camera here a second. There you go, all right. So I've tested that out. And obviously what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to pull this one off and I'm gonna do the same test procedure and I should hear absolutely nothing. Okay, so that is on. And again, absolutely nothing coming through there. So that is perfect. I know that that is all wired correctly and it's going to that one over there. Now we're gonna move over to this one over here. So again, super simple. We're gonna go from bank one to bank two. We're gonna go inlet bank two. We can see we've set it up as auxiliary two. We're gonna go into the auxiliary two test and we're gonna hit it to on. And as I do that and turn it off, there you go. I'm gonna pop this one off here and I'm gonna do the exact same test. 
that's on, that's off. And as you can see, we've got no noise at all. So again, I've determined that basically not only are they actually working, but obviously that they are wired correctly. So this is set as bank two, that is set as bank one. So I'm super happy with that. Okay, right. So hopefully this has been super helpful. There's nothing really more that I can test on this particular engine, but the principles are all the same. So if you had, you know, boost control solenoids, if you had any other type of thing, let's say maybe you had a cooling fan, maybe you had, uh, well, there's loads on your purge valves, um, your ECU hold power if you're running something that has a, a, a idle control motor that you want to keep the power on and let it reset before you do it. You can set, you can test all of those outputs by going into the relevant setting over here and usually you will find some sort of test. So if you're going to sign an auxiliary output, you usually find a test to it. And obviously the injectors and coils, they are completely standard. They will always be there. Obviously you just have to change it to suit your appropriate thing. So in other words, if you set it as a six cylinder, you're only going to test six, eight, eight, four, and four. Okay. Right. So again, hopefully that's been super helpful. I'm trying not to do too long of videos on these because I know you guys get impatient and you want to obviously crack on and get going. But that is how you test your outputs on your Link ECU. So if you have set one up yourself, you've gone through the whole process, watched other videos, you've set all your outputs to exactly where they should be. And this is then how you're going to test on the engine that they are all there. And this is incredibly useful to do before you try and start it mainly because you wouldn't have turned on your fuel pump yet. Your fuel rail is not going to be full of fuel and you're not going to end up flooding your engine and getting unexpected explosions or oh, air puffing out like you just saw I did right now. <laughs> but yeah, so that's absolutely fine. And I hope it's been helpful. If you guys have any questions, please pop down below, ask anything you want. Um, Obviously, I don't know what you guys don't know. It's very easy for me to stand here and say this is super easy to do. So I need your guys' help to let me know things that you want to know, and then I can do videos on them to help you guys out when you either buy a harness from us and you all want to play around with it, or if you're just doing it for yourself and you want some help in getting things set up. All right, but thanks for watching, guys, and you will see us again soon. Bye-bye.